And do you remember what um, what they were looking for in the guts of those uh, sea cucumbers? They were um, using stable isotopes, which can tell you, you know, what the food source is for the. I think it's some kind of food chain. Yeah. Study. Sometimes at these depths, those uh, holothurians are bright red and bright purple, like the one ones we saw, and that actually helps them not be seen because the the uh, I can't remember exactly what colors you know are harder to see in in water, but uh, I think those end up not being more visible than you know something that was bright yellow for example my students actually did a lab where they were exploring that earlier this semester they have these little underwater goggles with different layers of blue film and oh, cool. they use them to look at different colors of organisms and they nice. were quite surprised to see that the red was so cryptic that's mm. cool Really cool adaptation. What? Sure. Let me get my seatbelt fastened. What's our ship speed? Point two? Zero point two. Zero point two. I think stay a little lower. There's a another black coral it looks like. This one also has the polyps down the stalk, so Any of you tell us why this is called a black coral? Uh, zoom in there, Dave. Yeah, the skeleton is black. So if you look as we zoom in here, you can see beyond beyond the polyps, you can see it's much darker on the inside. It's actually black. Yeah, now you can 
Nice. And from Steve's talk, he was saying that this is because it's protein-based rather than calcium carbonate. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. Have to come up there. Right. And the yeah. reason why they're yep. found Decom some weather. of the deepest corals found. Yeah. So they don't deep because of that reason. Sounded like I wasn't right at this depth. The calcium carbonate would be dissolving. Mm. Uh, you know, and in fact, the corals that do use calcium carbonate have to keep secreting it constantly, or they, or they, their skeleton kind of dissolves away. So, so, what about the depth causes it to dissolve quicker? It's uh, the concentration of of calcium in the ocean decreases with depth so it's undersaturated mm. at, at these depths so it wants to dissolve it wants to go into solution yeah. leach out yeah we have a question from the viewers for rennie can you explain the heisenberg uncertainty principle in layman's terms <laughs> 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 so there's a cat in a box. <laughs> may or may not be dead. <laughs> Is it one of Hercules' boxes? <laughs> cat in a bio box. Oh my god. Oh, that's a bad day. Oh. <laughs> sure. So uh <laughs> Adam, what made you decide to study volcanoes? I've got two stories for that. The feel-good story is that when I was five years old, I saw the eruption of Mount St. Helens. That's actually true. And from that moment, just fell in love with the power of volcanoes. But in truth, I didn't really understand what it was. But I went to college in Minnesota. It's a very cold place and had an opportunity to do some research in Hawaii and I jumped at that chance and <laughs> that's when I fell in love with volcanoes when you see you know glowing active lava flows and can interact with them in the way that you can in uh, in a place like Hawaii I was totally hooked and then eventually found my way into the oceans where most of the earth's volcanic activity occurs and found there was so much to, to learn and discover. Uh, and, you know, it's, we need thousands of years to understand all the, the volcanoes in the oceans. But it's amazing the progress that, that we've made just, you know, during my time. And we've seen active eruptions in the deep ocean that, that we've never because seen of before. Technology advances. Correct? Yeah, we have. Yeah you know, just greater and greater access to the interior of the ocean. You know, the ROV that we're using here is has only been, you know, a technology that's only been around for a couple decades, really, in, in broad use. So, uh, you know, we're learning a lot. Do you have a favorite type of volcano? Um, yeah, I would have to say the the shield volcanoes, ocean island volcanoes are by far my favorite, like hmm. places like Hawaii and Galapagos and Iceland. Okay. Um, Why are they your favorite? I think they're my favorite because, one, they're in pretty nice places, <laughs> nice places to go. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you you can get a lot closer to the the action there, but I mean it's hard to say if you know a volcano like Mount Rainier, which I grew up looking at, or uh, even Yellowstone. Those are also fantastic. Did you play volcanologist as a child? <laughs> <laughs> My son took an astronaut costume and kind of turned it into a volcanologist costume. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Played that a lot. Do you have child. a little ladle? <laughs> <laughs> hmm. I like watching the.
videos on YouTube. So one of our viewers is asking, are we trying to date the rocks here, or what exactly are we trying to figure out about the seamounts? Yeah, so one of the questions is to understand the origin of these seamounts. So our kind of hypothesis or working model is that these are Cretaceous aged volcanoes that have moved more than 3,000 miles from where they first formed on the ocean floor as they rode the, you know, the tectonic plate across the Pacific. Um, and so we can look at the geochemistry uh, or the kind of like signature of the, the rock to understand if they were, are like the volcanoes around them that are of that known age or are they more like the Hawaiian Islands that are nearby, which are much younger? Uh, we can also use uh, radiometric dating, so uh, potassium argon or argon argon are radioactive isotopes that uh, kind of count the time that the rock ha since the rock is formed, and uh, we'll, we can use that to date the rocks as well. Um, but that's only part of why we're we're out here. Another part is to look at the the biology on these seamounts. They they form kind of a an oasis for life in the in the deep ocean because they are made up of hard rock, and a lot of animals like to attach themselves to the rocks. And we're also looking at the the crusts that have precipitated on the rocks that contain the rare metals that are. Um, really important for the technology that that's being developed uh, for battery storage and for electric cars and wind turbines and a, and a green uh, energy future. Um, and there's uh, certainly a, a move towards uh, potentially using these resources, which are in, in very short supply on land. So uh, what we want to understand is where the those rare metals are concentrated, what are the ecosystems that that live on them and rely on them, so that in the future uh, policymakers can make uh, right. good policies Roger. about sustainable use of those resources. Does anybody else have a favorite volcano? <laughs> Viewer asks, I'm not a geologist, I may butcher these names. Are you partial to the basaltic volcanoes or the rhyolitic and the andesitic? Mm. <laughs> I am partial to the basaltic volcanoes, uh -huh. but I've worked on some pretty amazing rhyolitic volcanoes as well that uh, produce, you know, totally different types of rocks. They're, they're, the eruptions are more explosive, you get rocks like pumice, whereas basaltic volcanoes, you get pretty much black rock. Um, but those are those are kind of my first love, that type of volcano. And if I had to pick a favorite single volcano, it would be a Kilauea volcano on the big island of Hawaii. Mm. Mm. viewer is saying, so we want to understand what's under the water before we go and do something like the deep sea mining and potentially damage those resources permanently. That's exactly right. We don't even know what's there. We need to survey the biodiversity so we know what to protect. interesting how formative those things can be so early in life for me 
I was watching Captain Kangaroo, and he was showing how to sprout a seed. And I was eating a grapefruit, and I saved the seeds, and my mom helped me sprout them, and we grew those into trees that produce bushels and bushels of grapefruit. No way. That's cool. And they finally died off in that big freeze in South Texas this past uh, this past winter. It's going to take a long time for them to recover from that. I had a Captain Kangaroo album <laughs> with a birthday song on it. It had my name in it. Wow. I, I can sing that song for you guys if you want. <laughs> uh, absolutely. We, we have time. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I I need to I need to practice. Oh. We'll, be back. Next we'll be back. We'll be back at the birthday song. tomorrow. We'll bring out the telecaster. <laughs> yeah, I think Springsteen played the telecaster on that. <laughs> What's that? Uh, that sponge? Oh. Where? No. Oh, upper or the upper left. Upper. No, it's just some weird oxidation on the crust. Yeah. yeah. As a master control operator at a CBS affiliate, I was uh, responsible for putting Captain Kangaroo on the air every morning. Wow. <laughs> Dave. <laughs> I mean, not many people know this, but he was not really a captain. What? No. <laughs> Nor was he a kangaroo. Wow. <laughs> Shattering dreams out there. <laughs> Mr. Green Jeans did wear green jeans, though. Hmm. Is that a cucumber right there on the uh, bottom right? Uh, bottom yeah, right there, there you go. Good eye. Totally missed that. Is that the same one we sampled? I don't know. I think it's the one that we looked at before. The one we sampled seemed to have a lot of appendages. Oh, yeah, you're right. More sea pig like. Get a. Can I zoom in there, Dave? That's not very appendage is it? No, it certainly has like little spikes and stuff, but it looks a bit different. Are we in a decent place to sample this? No, unfortunately not. Okay. We could uh we could plan for this and try to get ahead. Um, just like ride at the front and then we'll we can probably because we have Do a flyby. Do a flyby. But yeah, you want to catch catch way up. Okay, keep them wide there, Dave. Or is that what? All right, good. You. I can do some catching up. Yeah. Catch on up. It's been really cool meeting all of the different scientists and videographers and hearing everybody's story, especially since I've seen some of you on screen since 2019. You're meeting remotely. Everybody has a very cool story on this ship. It's one of the best parts about being here. Yeah, it's a good point. Half the half the fun of coming out to sea is all the stories and people's backgrounds, and everyone has very different walks of life as to how they get out here. Yeah. If you want to find out more, you can look at our expedition and click on the bios and read about some of them. It's another holothery in there. Yep. I think. A little bit bigger. It's on the move as well, yeah. Uh, oh yeah. yeah, the floaty. Zoom in there. Okay. Cool. It's on the run. It's on a tumble. tumble. 
<laughs> Very fun. Are we still too far behind to try and suck him up? Yeah. I, I think yeah, I can. it looks similar to what we collected too, right? Yeah, hard to say. No, uh, this one's not as red, but it does have a similar body. Oh uh, yeah, you're gonna want to get way ahead yeah, if we're gonna okay. if we're gonna attempt that. I right. can, and also, there, we can always come ahead. back. Um, it's just a it's a time cost that we have to consider. Yeah. If we Where are we in the current move? Uh, the ship Sponge. has about twenty six meters left in its move, and Argus probably has about a uh, hundred meters. To, if we stopped right now, it would swing a hundred meters. So, yeah. but we could always backtrack. But that'll take a little bit. And yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not worried. We've seen enough of these in the area that yeah. I expect we're going to... Yeah, we'll more. probably see plenty more sea cucumbers yeah, along really the way. Really interesting looking. Yeah, it's a sponge. strange sponge. It's a lot. Yeah. Do the stalks often have those little spikies on them? I have never seen that. Do you yeah, want to come forward a little bit faster there, Jake? Yep. Yeah, just fly up there. All right, everyone close your eyes while we go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but wait, wasn't there a black rock? <laughs> <laughs> this rock is important to science. <laughs> must image it. I'm actually surprised at how few rocks we've collected. I've been very restrained. <laughs> That's a big one. Glad we weren't feeling these heaves when we, when we were deeper. Yeah. Now we're only maxing out at like 14,000. Nice. Another one there. Another one there, yep. Okay. I think you're good ahead there, Dick. Yep. All right. Althurian watch. Althurian watch. All right. It's a little something off to the left. Coral. Yellow. Where's that? Oh, the crinoid? Right here. Coming into oh, the Oh, tiny little crinoid, yeah. Stock crinoid. Oh, yeah. Good eye. I didn't even see that. You won't know center screen. <laughs> One of our viewers asked what got Dr. Dr. Ballard in there, Dave? Oh, Dr. Ballard started in the military. Thanks. And then... Nice. Uh, All right. I think in the... Not sure what Thank you. he did in the military or in the Navy. Was Let's back up and remember but, uh, he was then, born in Kansas. <laughs> or he uh, lived in Kansas, too, before he moved. Yeah. Some connection there. What yeah. was that there? What's yeah. that? Sponge? Is that a line or a sponge? Yeah. yeah pan over to it? it. Looks like sponge. but it has a new book you can read. Tell the whole story. Maybe falling over? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's a, a lot of stock for a little uh, sponge. Yeah. Man. Seems like oh, it's lying down. Yeah, it's a sleepy. Flew a little too close to the sun. Does it have the spikes <laughs> on it? Can we zoom on that? Sure. On what part? On of the it? base or the? Uh, I want to see if it. I guess um, just partly on the stock and the up near the head and then the head as well. I want to see if it has the spikes. Okay, I can start down at the. Oh sure. Base, I guess. Go along down it. Oh. 
All right. I wonder if the spikes were hydrozoa or something. Just that we had Zoom in there? Yeah, I don't know. They were, but they were small. I don't see any here, just sediment. If we knew the sedimentation rate, we could tell when this stalk fell over. <laughs> <laughs> You want to get back out in front of our yep. gifts there? You come wide again there, Dave. Thanks. Anemone? Yeah. Sponge there off to the right. The oh right. Yeah. Looks like a gummy bear on a stick. That looks pretty big. Yeah. Oh, there's another one off in the distance as well. on the rock there is that an encrusting sponge yeah encrusting oh, sponge wow. or encrusting tunicate it looks like yeah one of the two you that white to the white right. rim yeah yeah very cool Nice pirouette. Yeah. yeah. I think you're right, Jess. It looks more sponge-like than, than tuna kit. Than a tuna kit, yeah. Can yeah. you zoom on the one that's encrusting? The encrusting? Yeah. yeah. Zoom in there. Hmm. Yeah, totally sponge. Wow. Yeah. It's really on just like the ridges of the rock. Mm -hmm. Very linear. Very cool. So is each little blob a separate organism? Yeah, I don't know if they're recruits or, I mean. 
Alright, Jake, you might wanna... Come on. Yeah, I got yeah. a boogie. They must be, because they can't, they're not connected. Yeah. You full wide there, Dave? Nice. Alright, thanks. Get out of there. Start your boogie. Boogie. More stuff in the water column, no? Hmm. Yeah, you're right. Seeing the lasers more, too. Okay. Is that a sponge in our bottom right? Sponge in the bottom right? Bottom right. Did you need to look at that? You can go take down. See it dead center? Yeah. Is that the one you were after? Yeah. yeah. Thank you. You gotta zoom there. We're falling off station to the east. Okay. Roger. Ship completed its move backwards, but now it's yeah, quite a bit of east movement. All right. Um, pick up and yeah, yep. back up. All right, thanks, Dave. Thank you. Argus should still be moving around, like yeah, three one five or whatever. Okay, we reset our baseline, so it might eventually feel a bit of an east move, but okay. that'll save us from fighting it like crazy. Roger that. Uh, still want to keep moving up, Adam? Uh, I think we'll, let's have the ship hold this position for a minute. Sure. And uh, take a look around for some cucumbers. Sure. For context, I'll zoom out a little bit on high pack there. Looks like we're kind of on this uh, less yeah. steep slope of the as we follow the ridge up. Waypoint two is. What's the depth at waypoint two? Yep, sure. Oh, sorry, the depth at it. Yeah. Um, I just have it on on the dive plan. It's three uh, three three four two. And we're currently at three four seven two. So, and what's the distance to waypoint two from here? From us is approximately 390 meters. All right, so uh, why don't we make the next move, not just yet, but uh -huh. for 150 meters uh -huh. to waypoint two. Yep. Uh, but let's pause here once Argus catches up uh -huh. and just take a look around. Okay, so we'll pause here and then we'll go a little bit.
All right, Jess, so we're paused and uh, gonna look around for Holotherians and what else were you after here? Not a rock yet, right? No, not a rock yet. Roger. Ernie, how far have we come since the beginning of the dive? I will check. It's about 800 or so meters. Okay, roger that. So for one of our viewers who perhaps joined us recently, what are the types of rocks we're looking for? Uh, all the rocks here are pretty much the same. We want to sample at different water depths where there's different oxygen concentration uh, in order to take a look at the uh, manganese crusts and in particular how enriched they are in cobalt. Uh, which may be correlated or anti-correlated with the oxygen concentration in the water. Surprisingly, not a lot of sea cucumbers in this particular location. Yeah. Not a lot of anything. It's also a pretty steep slope, right, in front of mm -hmm. us? Yeah. All right, well, let's make that next move. Roger. Okay. About 150 meters, he said. Mm-hmm. And uh, towards waypoint two, we'll go up here. Three, 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 zero. Three, three, zero, Raj. Bridge now. Step one, five, zero meters, 150 meters, bearing three, three, zero. Thank you. Three three zero. Jessica, I don't want to sample here, but if I did, do you see anything that's sampleable in terms of rocks? Um, yeah, for for rock samples, there might be there, there are some candidates here. Okay. Um, although a lot of them look like they're welded together. pretty consolidated yeah. but there are some like gravel bowl chunks like you see kind of center screen a little to the lower left now mm -hmm. yep. there might be like one or two in there that are loose are you is this for future knowledge and reference or yeah, just an, an assessment of sure thing yeah, there's there it looks like there's some looser pieces, but um you won't really know until you poke it. Wiser words. 
were never said. <laughs> <laughs> Really hoping for a sea cucumber around here. Jake's like at the ready here with the manip. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I got nothing. Yeah, I kind of feel like a sea cucumber would just kind of roll down this uh, yeah. slope. Straight into our slurp bucket. Yeah. <laughs> yep. It's a bit Humble difficult down. because the, we're, they're long dives and we're trying to collect them at deep depths, but over the course of the dive, the temperature will change, the pressure, so they're kind of sitting in the jar. Yeah, the right. jars aren't very well insulated. Yeah, but we might get lucky and they'll, they won't be too uh, gelatinous at the surface. And Sounds like yeah. they want them mainly for the contents, so yeah. as long as that's intact. Started moving yet? <laughs> Not really, yeah. I think they just settled out from the yeah, from eastward the move. Yeah. We have a suggestion for a team name Cucumber Hunters. Oh, Cucumber Hunters. Yes. <laughs> Very nice. much easier or much more difficult than the land-based profession. <laughs> <laughs> That's not entirely true. You know, when you like, yeah. like peek through those leaves and you're like, oh my God, how'd that get so big? <laughs> it's not going to fit in my slurp. Right. <laughs> but I feel like a land cucumber just doesn't move. So, right. therefore... Well, not when you stun them with the blow dart. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty easy to capture then. I think you uh, might be mixing the hunting gathering part. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
Starting to feel the move now, it looks like, potentially. Nice. It's a different one. Oh, there's a cucumber down to the bottom right. I don't oh. know if we'll get that in time. Yeah, I think we do. I think we got the time. All right, Jake, you ready for this? Yeah. So much what for that sponge. <laughs> yeah. All right, get her out there. We'll have to image it. Um, might be up on a hose clamp, but kind yeah. of try. Nice. Uh, All right, great. You know, freeze it there. We're going to get a oh. quick. Almost dropped it. Nice. Let's get there. Go ahead and freeze arm. Freeze. I'm keeping an eye on it, Jess. Yeah. Go ahead and push on in there, please. And keep an eye on it and bubble there, too. Yep. That's great. You want this, science? Yep. Yeah, yeah. yeah we do. Full eye, please. Full. All right. We're getting this before our watch change. Yeah, we are. You are at 100% and we are on number two. All right, Jake. Pull. I'm gonna come in a little bit. Yep. All right. Whoop. Nice, I get it. I just wanna shut it off once it's in. I don't wanna yeah. eviscerate it. Come on. It's in. Nice. Section go. zeroed. Awesome. Good awesome. Job. Job. awesome. This is definitely a different one from the other one. And right. This is sample six. This is five. Five. I'm gonna need to come up on the uh, Argus there. And, yeah. Um, just Hercules as well. There we go. Depth awesome. was three four six three. Pink holotherian. Cool. Nice. Good job. Yeah, that was fun. That seems like two different species at two different depths and they wanted a they wanted deep ones right deeper than three thousand deeper yep. than three yeah. thousand yeah that's good all right you done with the arm there jake okay. oh there's another one. Oh my oh. gosh oh. Oh. we are seeing so many now uh. just keep the hose running <laughs> <laughs> 
Hey, see if you can roast for days here. You make a salad. <laughs> Jake, before you switch off that bucket cam, do you want to rotate to the flush? Yep. Mm. And go ahead and come up on the delta when you're done. I had a question asking, what does it mean when you say come up on the delta or go down on the delta? Yeah, so there's, um, the delta is basically the, the, the relative distance between Herc and Argus. So we have a 30 meter tether connecting the two. Um, and so the delta that we're referring to is kind of like this delta Z position, if you will. Um, so basically how far underneath Hercules is from Argus, or how, how, how far above Argus is from Hercules. Um, so if you notice that when our delta gets lower, um, Hercules seems to be closer to Argus, and that's because we're closer in the water column uh, with respect to where the two vehicles are to each other. So we, uh, we try to fly at, at a conservative delta of about 15 to 20. Um, when you get lower into the tens and, or sorry, a little bit lower than like 10, um, you get into potential issues of wrapping the tether around Argus or whatnot. So kind of unintended consequences of flying so low. One of our viewers was asking about why we're collecting the sea cucumbers they just joined. That was to that's for one of our researchers to understand um, their gut contents. Is that correct? Yeah, that's right. And what's what's kind of cool about that is that that's not a, a researcher who's on the ship. That's someone who knows that you know in the community who's, who knows that we're out here and who has a need for um, you know samples from these deep depths and is something that is part of the Ocean Exploration Trust and the, the Cooperative Institute that it's part of is to uh, help the community with their research needs. Uh, so scientists who, who would like samples from this are uh, invited or, or you know, reach out and, uh, and we do our best to accommodate those, those requests. It's very cool that we have a science chat. So scientists who are not even aboard the ship can participate and uh, weigh in on observations, things that we're seeing. Yeah, speaking of, um, we have a request if we see anything at the end of these feeding trails to zoom in on it. Um, by anything, do you mean an organism or? Right, sorry, yeah. Anything alive that may be creating the feeding trails. Sure thing. We have a volcano question. You're up for a volcano question, Adam. Absolutely. <laughs> Is there any difference in the materials that a volcano will put out when it's below the water um, versus on the land? 
yeah absolutely so one of the things one of the kind of components of magma is uh volatile elements like carbon dioxide and sulfur fluorine and chlorine and water and volcanoes on land as they ascend to to shallower depths and and to the land surface will exsolve or or uh, those those volatiles will come out of the liquid and make bubbles uh, just like when you open a, a can of uh, can we soda. maybe see it that that is the same thing that we've been looking at on the left. Do you see it, Adam? She can put it on the telestrator. The uh, white dot? Right, yep, right there. A little white. Oh, okay. it didn't show up on their screen. Hmm. There we go. Right, so in the ocean, you have this additional hydrostatic pressure from the water above, and that'll keep some of those volatiles in solution rather than making bubbles. So in the ocean, an eruption that might have been explosive on land can uh, be effusive Could or not put Do a quick zoom in on the sky, please. Dave? Thank you. It's like a... That is odd. <laughs> I don't understand that one. Come a little <laughs> wide, please. It's a weird one. Yeah. Not just a, a clear sea cucumber? Uh, it's like it had a shell. Yeah, the innards look like a... Is this something on a shell or no? What is that? I know. It kind of looks like a mix An between a shell and a shell? sponge. I don't know. That might be the is gut. A, a slit limpid is what it is in the chat. A... Say that again? Slit limpet. Slit, Slit limpet. limpet. All right, I'm going to have to come up pretty soon, Never guys. Seen that before. It's a group from the 90s, I think. Pull <laughs> <laughs> away, oh, please. Can I come up there, Jake? Yes. Yeah, we got to go. It's not too bad, though. So that really looked like the shell was on the bottom and the uh -huh. fleshy part was on the outside? Yeah, yeah, it did. Yeah, that's weird. The viewer asked if we were finding trash, and we saw a can early in our dive. That's the only thing we've seen so far. There's one of those, like, uh, conical, what do we call them, gastropods? Is that what we're going Yeah, with? gastropod, I, thought, I don't know if, they, if it was a limpet or not, but um, those seem to be what's, what are at the end of some of these trails. Yeah. We even got a good close-up of one earlier, one more sampling. Oh, there's another one. Yeah, there. we did. One of our viewers would like to know what other types of devices we have to collect besides the slurp samplers that we've been seeing on Hercules and a little bit more about how those samples are stored. So we have, uh, to collect water, we have Niskin bottles. Those are basically an open tube that when we trigger it, closes on the top and the bottom to trap the water that's in there. We have uh, push cores. These are essentially hard tubes that you take out and push into the sediment. And the sediment fills the tube, and then you stick it back in a quiver uh, in, until you get to the surface. Uh, lots of other tools are used by, uh, by Hercules and, and other vehicles, including scoops, 